Hello everybody and welcome back to art class. This week I am going to be covering some of my digital art hacks, my biggest secrets for how I make my digital art. So stick around and check out these hacks. I've tried to create a good mix of hacks that are kind of simple and I see a lot of people use and hacks that I only use and hacks that are a bit obscure, you know? I try to include stuff that isn't in other YouTube videos, you know, some, some original thoughts here and there. I'm not completely copying every other art, digital art hack on the internet. This is also a tutorial that will, wor will work for, as far as I know, Clip Studio Paint, Procreate, and Medibang. Uh, it will probably work on other drawing programs as well, but just because those are the softwares that I've worked with, I know that it'll work on those because, um, yeah, that's, that's just what I've worked with and that's what I know. But we'll start with our first hack, which is soft liner. So if you were here for class last week, I was working on this drawing and yeah, we, I finished inking it uh, during another stream. It, it came out really, really nice, the inking. And our first hack being soft liner, what I mean by this is that after making my liner, I usually soften it in a certain way. I see other artists do this. It's actually kind of a common thing. And if you've always been wondering how artists, digital artists get that kind of like inky look to their art, you might be unfamiliar with this technique and this is how people do it. So I'm gonna show you guys right here how I do it. I'm gonna pop out my layer window as, you, as always to show y'all my layer window. And I'm going to take my inks layer. It says inks copy, it's not a copy. This is the original, <laughs> but I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm gonna duplicate it it over to duplicate layer and the copy below it so the one underneath because now you have two go down there and I go over to filter and I hit blur and I hit Gaussian blur now if, if you're on clip studio paint and you have preview on you should be able to see uh, the preview of how this changes your work and if you untap it it goes back as you could tell, and I'll, I'll zoom in a bit here, maybe on uh, Mustang's face. When I apply that blur, it, it, it softens my line art. It gives it an inkier quality, a more uh, blurred kind of look, soften. It just softens it. It's just a blur that you put in the background. How that works is that it just takes that second line art uh, layer and it, it Gaussian blurs it. So yeah. So. I, it's up to you where, where you put this on strength and it's also like dependent on exactly how big your image is, how much resolution you have to work with. Um, this is a pretty big drawing, so I, I never put it like all the way to this end over here. It just is not <laughs> something that I ever use. I could show like, I just, I, I never, it's not even coming up. So I don't even, I won't, I won't even bother. So yeah, I usually keep it down anywhere between like two and five. Uh, I think I had it on six, but sometimes I just keep it a little bit lower. I might do like a four here. I don't know, maybe a three and a half. So yeah, 3.6, I think that's nice. I zoom out and it has nicely blurred my line art. So it doesn't look so crunchy <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how you would how you would want to call that but yeah that's like my easiest and simplest digital hack and you could do that on procreate as well so and on medibang pretty much every program has gosh and blur feature you just have to find it clip studio paints and filters um, on procreate I know you gotta hit the little tool up in the top left so just hit okay and there you go now you got yourself a extra line art layer you can merge them if you want i keep them separate for a while just in case i decide to go back and undo it or make it lighter or whatever i it's just fine to keep your layers separate for now it doesn't really matter but 
Yeah, this is what the blur layer looks like without the inking on top of it and then without the blur layer. So they come together and make this sort of nice harmony. Another thing that you could do with this that I've done before is I've taken like a dark red and got myself like an airbrush tool and then I've alpha locked which you can do by selecting the layer that you want to alpha lock and hit lock transparent pixels which is right here so I've just locked that blurred ink layer and a lot of the times I'll come in and I will uh, take the airbrush tool which is massive right now, I think, too big. And sometimes I'll come in and I'll, I will color the blurred layer like red in certain places. And that's just, I mean, a technique that I use. A lot of times I'll, I'll just do it on the skin or something or somewhere where warmth is coming from, you know, the skin, these scars in here might need it. Uh, it's just a nice thing to accent your piece with sometimes, that nice red sort of uh, blur there. I really enjoy using it, so. But yeah, that's, it's like, that's like my simplest art hack possible. I'm starting out with the simplest one is just the, uh, the very simple blur tool. Down here I have these, a lot of these flowers down here, so I might just come in and make my brush way bigger than this and I might just do the flowers I hope that works yeah it does work just because the flowers have sort of that soft quality so I'm gonna come in and do those now you see that the blurred layer has that red uh, aspect to it so you know a lot of people just keep it black I, a lot of times I just keep it black but sometimes it's nice to add the warmth up to you anyway on to the second art hack Okay, so art hack number two. Uh, this is a technique that I is very near and dear to my heart. It's a shading technique that I use as like my first shading pass on every drawing that I do. And um, I can actually show you guys what it looks like when it's completely finished, but we're just gonna be using it a little bit here and there, trying to keep this video kind of short. So I feel the need, I always tend to go over. It's pretty hard to see here, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what, I, what my point was because it's very hard to see here. But when I start out uh, doing shading, I do a initial shading pass with an airbrush tool. And a lot of people will say, don't shade with an airbrush tool, yada, yada, yada. But hey, look, airbrush tool and I, we were uh, friends to enemies to lovers relationship here. I love the airbrush tool now and after, you know, not having used it for a long time because it, ma it makes your art look muddy usually, but so don't shade like this because I'm about to show you guys my most big brained shading method that I've ever invented. I, I don't know, if I didn't invent this. I'm sure that other people use this technique, but it's just like something that I've been using and that I discovered kind of through my own uh, testing out my, my art and whatnot. So once again, like we did last class, I'm gonna be trying to focus on Mustang's upper body <laughs> just because I don't have enough time to do this whole piece uh, in one class session. So we're just gonna be focusing on Mustang's upper half. Uh, we will be messing around with some other stuff too. But we're going to be using him like as a subject for teaching. He's been a, he's been a good uh, participant in all this. But let me show you all how I do this. So first of all, I've made a new layer on top of my colors. I did just basic flat coloring throughout this entire piece with the bucket tool. Very simple stuff. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, please go watch my first art tutorial where I do all of those, uh, I think it's called Digital Art for Dummies. I'll link it in the description if you need it, just in case, but it's a very simple digital tutorial where I teach you guys how to make layers and whatnot. But you should already know how to do that. And if you do already know how to do that, uh, this technique is perfect for you. 
I've put down my base colors. I'm on top of my base colors. You could do this without your colors, really, if you want to, but you should really have your colors down. I, I'm heading over here to the lasso selection tool. This tool has saved my butt so many times, and I will show you guys why. Another thing I also do is I clip my shading layer, which is right going to be right here. We'll name it. Shade Pass 1, and we'll name this layer Colors characters because I colored the flowers in a different layer so this is our first shading pass layer and make sure that you're in the layer above it something that I usually do is I clip this layer to the layer below it meaning I could only color inside of sorry inside of of this area I'm not allowed to color outside the outside the layer below it so what I do is I take my lasso tool and I come in and I find areas of shadow. We'll start out with his face since faces are pretty easy to understand. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take places of shadow. If you don't know a lot about the lasso tool, lasso tool is really cool. Uh, you could do all kinds of stuff with it. You could do line art with it. And there are these little selection options here. You could hit add. Right now I have add to selection, which means if I make another selection, it'll just add it to the one before it. Or you could hit remove from selection. So if I want to take out something, it'll take it out, which makes it really easy to work with. And, you know, if, if you make mistakes, you just kind of clean these up. But I try to make this as clean as possible, and you'll see kind of why that is. My selections... I usually try to make them just very, very clean. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select all the areas that I think are cast in the most shadow here in Mustang's face, which is quite a bit of uh, space. So I'll probably cut forward to when I finish with that. But if you're not familiar with how to shade a human face, a human, a human face, a human face properly. I recommend just looking at reference and uh, yeah, just look at reference. Don't be scared to look at reference, you know. Uh, take photos of yourself in different lighting and use that to your advantage. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to select all the areas on his face and I'll show you what I'm about to do next. Okay, so I just went ahead and, and I uh, just selected all the areas that I think uh, look good the best and you could come back and you could change this and erase if you don't like things, but I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take my airbrush tool and I'm going to just airbrush in. But before I do that, I'm going to set this to a darken layer. A lot of people use multiply layer too. I just prefer the darken layer. I don't know why that is, but um, yeah, I just use the darken uh, layer. Hi, Mora. Thanks for the raid. Welcome to the stream. So I use the darken layer to do this pass. Um, I usually select and then I set it down to like 30%, 30% opacity. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna lay it out. All right, so I'm gonna take my airbrush tool and I'm gonna come in and just shade the, uh, the layer, the areas that I want to shade. and. It might not come out at first like how you expected it to come out or whatever, and you could always adjust la later. I find it's good to just make the brush smaller for some areas to like get it the way that you want it to do, but I, I never make the brush too small. Try to just make it a little bit small. I also come in a lot and I also I come in and I come in with the uh, transparent pixels, transparent pixels. So if you want to, you could come over and you could select the transparent pixels and use it as an eraser to kind of go back and like erase if you think you did too much shading. So this is like the first pass that I do when I shade. It's it's not like the end or anything and I do a lot more shading, which I will show you guys after this first pass so i come in to try to try to get it in the darkest areas that i can some of these areas like are, are, are meant to be very very dark 
And then some of them aren't meant to be that dark, and I've accidentally added a little bit too much. So yeah, that's kind of that first initial pass when it comes to shading. Hit select and then deselect and bam! Now you have very simple cell shading uh, to start out with. I mean, look at how simple that is. This is just like how I use my first pass. So, you know, take it or leave it. But the airbrush tool is really great. You could also do this uh, with different colors, like instead of doing it as that sort of dark blue color, you can change it to maybe like a dark red or something. And that might interest you, you know, if you'd rather have it be that dark red color rather than blue. Uh, I usually prefer the blue, that's what the red looks like, you know. Typically I'm working in that blue color. And then I add red kind of stuff much later. So yeah, that's that's just simple. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do this to his entire upper body that way once we get to the later steps in this drawing. It'll make more sense. So just to, you know, repeat what I kind of already said. I come in and I take my lasso tool, I make sure that it's on. Add selection, I also use remove selection in case I need it uh, to clean up. Come in here and I select areas of shadow. It's good to have a knowledge of how shadow works, obviously, and uh, fabric folding and stuff because the way that fabric folds um, can, can influence your art and how you, how you need to shade, you know, how you need to go about it. So I'd say it's a good idea to, to keep in mind the way that things work in real life. And make sure you study your fundamentals, as, as boring as it sounds. Like, make sure that you know how all this shading is meant to uh, look before you go into it. I kind of just wing it. I do, I don't know what the shading technique is called, where you just shade where stuff overlaps a little bit. It's called something. Uh, I think I, I heard uh, that guy Mark, <laughs> that, that YouTuber that also does art class. <laughs> I think I heard him talk about the uh, proper word for it, but I don't remember what the exact word was. But yeah, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do all this stuff down here. If you're wondering how I'm gonna do the fabric, I usually do something like this. Uh, try to try to like imitate folds in a way and it's good to like block out larger areas too sometimes shading bigger areas just like looks kind of cool so don't be afraid to select a lot of, of space it's an airbrush so it's it's not gonna like ruin ruin your piece or anything don't worry about it Okay, so since I, ju I just selected basically everything in his clothes and uh, the technique isn't to just like pull it like all over like a knucklehead. It's more to come in and um, do it carefully in areas where you think it's needed, you know. So I do have alpha lock on right now. So don't like come in and just like blob it on. Uh, be meticulous, you know, and like think about where you're putting it. So make it a bit smaller and then come in and, and try to lay in a nice gradient. The key is to get that nice gradient into all the areas uh, that you selected with the tool. That nice gradated shading look is the reason that makes this technique sh just so fun and, and satisfying to use. You can really see it right here how it kind of just gradates down and it's not like, it's not just cell shading at that point, it's also um, a great, it's a gradient, you know? It's an easy way to do a nice gradient type shading. I've tried to just select the parts that I think would be in shadow due to overlapping and whatnot. And I tend to do crazy lighting effects later, and I'll actually show you guys one of my lighting hacks for, you know, if you really don't know what you're doing with your lighting, I do have a hack for that. 
I come in here and I try to make that really dark. Over here, like, that nice gradation is really just, I don't know, it's just such a nice thing to, to get looking good. Look at that, man. I mean, what's better? What's better than this? Just guys being dudes, coloring, shading like a pro, man, with the airbrush tool. So once you hit deselect, bam, look at that. Oh my goodness, it's like suddenly you have this really nice, simple shading. I mean, it was just so easy to do. Who would have thunk? Uh, the airbrush tool making a comeback, um, redeeming itself in the shading department because so many artists just say, don't shade with the airbrush tool, blah, 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 blah. What they're not telling you is that it's not don't shade with the airbrush tool. It's don't shade like an idiot with the airbrush tool. Shade like a smart person. Use your little brain and develop cool techniques. So yeah, that's our shade pass. You know, just real quick added just the, the nicest little touch of shading. And I'll come in and I'll do more interesting shading in a moment. I'll show you guys how to do that too. So we can move on to our next hack, hack number three. So to go right through the shading kind of techniques that I use, I have a favorite cell shading technique. And I stole this technique from Hades game, the Hades game. <laughs> and I used it a lot here in Chainsaw Man, my Chainsaw Man and illustration. A lot of, some of this is airbrush, some of this is not. and. If you want to achieve this weird shaded effect that I have on my piece, which I've been using now for most of my art, I'm about to show you guys how to do it. So the key here is three value per highlight and shadow. And I'll show you first how that looks with shadow and I'll show you after that how it looks with highlight. I'll do a little bit of his face and I'll do a little bit of his jacket and maybe some of the gold just to give you guys a well-rounded explanation on how this technique works. Okay, so I'm in the uh, layer above my colors and below this shading layer and I've, I've made a new layer here and I'm gonna do a interesting shading technique. I kind of stole it from Hades game as I said, but I'm gonna select his skin tone and I'm going to pick a color, and it's important what color you pick, although you could change your colors later, as I will show you. I have another one of my hacks has to do with that. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that color and I'm gonna, I'm gonna warm it up a little bit. I'm gonna try to drag it to the right so that I'm getting a color more in that sort of area. I want it to be a little bit more similar, so something like that, you know. It's okay to go drastic, and I usually do go pretty drastic with this uh, technique here. So I sort of I stole this from Hades game. If you look at if you've played Hades, the game, or if you've looked at the art before, you will kind of see this interesting coloring style that they have with all kinds of stuff. And I studied the <laughs> assets from that game for so many hours, just staring at them and thinking and tracing them and trying to figure it out and I just loved that game so much and the art that eventually the coloring style kind of made its way into my own art. When I saw Hades come out and I saw the art I was like oh my god that's what I want my art to look like at least a little bit and instantly started studying it. I think it's important that all artists do something like that. Find what really inspires you and study it. So I'm gonna come in and I'm going to basically shade again, but kind of differently. Uh, this, this technique that I'm using here is just laying out color. And this color that I'm using is very saturated. There's a reason for that, so uh, try not to think too hard about it. But <laughs> this will not be the only color that I use here. And I might change it or whatever, but first I'm going to just lay down where I think it should go. Uh, just somewhat, somewhat similar to my previous shading pass, but a bit different. And if you're using a pro the right brush, you could also kind of use the bucket fill tool with this technique if you if you'd like. 
I, I don't always, sometimes I do use the bucket fill tool. And the key for this initial color here is to get it kind of extending further than you initially think that you need. Use a lot of it. Uh, it should take up quite a bit of your, of your piece. Don't be afraid to use this color. I'm using, as you can see, I'm shading in a lot of the skin tone with this. And this is not a multiply layer. This is not a darken layer. This is just um, a regular kind of color layer. I, I didn't add any blending mode to this or anything. I'm just coming in here and I'm sort of laying everything out. In fact, I might do a little uh, Rembrandt kind of <laughs> technique here. Uh, I don't know if, they, if it's still called Rembrandt triangle, but I'm about to make a Rembrandt triangle over here. So prepare yourselves. It's called the, uh, this is like a, a bonus, a bonus hack, I guess. I'm gonna race out that lip first. But yeah, they call this the Rembrandt triangle. It's when you come in here and you like erase out a little triangle. It's not, that's not really a triangle, but it's close enough. Rembrandt is famous for doing that in his art and come in and just erase spots that I think would do better as a highlight, whatever, you know. And if you don't like it, you could always mess with the blending mode and like uh, try, try changing the colors and whatnot. Since it's just a big color layer, it doesn't really matter too much what you do with it. It's okay to adjust. There's, so, there's still time to adjust. Like I might think right now this color is just too strong and I'm not a big fan of it. And I am kind of thinking that right now. I'm thinking maybe I wanna change this color and uh, make it more muted or something. But just lay it down first and then change it. Think about it, you know. I'm also gonna come into here to the ear. Just gonna get all up in the ear area. Fix this up. Okay, so once you have it all laid out, I think it's good to come in and adjust what you have if you're not feeling too confident with this first color pass. It's important also to zoom out and just take a look and be like, how would this look in the grand scheme of things? For me, I might just lower the opacity a little bit, or you could also just come in and color pick and then <laughs> just cover it up and try try again with a different shade or whatever. Like I am right here, I'm messing with a couple other colors and whatnot. I like that a lot, so I might leave that how it is. Switch back to my pen, turn off that clipping mask, and now I'm gonna start with that uh, second color, so. As we go along, you're gonna see that I'm gonna have this layering effect of uh, shading. I'm gonna do a new layer on top of that layer. I'm gonna color select the color I was just working with. Make sure you're not selecting on where you airbrushed. Uh, you can also remove the airbrushing if you want for now just to help you focus, but I don't usually remove it. I'm gonna color pick and I'm gonna go darker. And I'm also gonna go grayer. I'm not just gonna go darker. I'm also gonna go darker down. So I'm going this way rather than this way this time. But you might wanna go down on a slant. Like it really depends on the piece and how you're picking, color picking here. So I like that color, but of course I could change it uh, in the end by making a clipping mask and recoloring it or doing whatever. So now I'm gonna take this color and I'm gonna drop it in in the darkest areas. I am not gonna cover up what the work that I just did with that other shading. I'm gonna reserve this for the darkest parts of his face. The darkest shaded areas and around the, the head and whatnot all the areas that might be casted in the most shadow. Once again, I stole this technique from Hades game. They do it a lot. 
and I really liked it, so I stole it. I didn't steal it, I learned it. <laughs> That's what, you, that's what I should say. I learned this technique from Hades. I didn't steal it. Um, it's a technique that I really loved how they used it. And I, and I said, wow, I think I can integrate that into my art. And there's nothing wrong with that. Integrating stuff like that into your work. Um, that's, just how, that's just how art works. You know, you, you learn things by looking at other people's art and, and you put it in your own work. And that's how art has always worked, you know. Uh, the old masters did it the same way. They studied each other's art and they uh, copied it. They copied each other's techniques. They learned from each other. And in class, you, we're still told to, you know, study the old master's work and whatnot. And start, art students find it like super annoying. Like, why do I have to do master studies? Why do I have to study freaking Da Vinci? I'm tired of that man. Well, it's good for you eat your vegetables, <laughs> but if you don't want to study from someone like Da Vinci or Michelangelo, studying from your favorite video game <laughs> that has your favorite video game art style counts, I have to say. So in this case, uh, the shading technique that I use, I stole from my, one of my favorite video games. And yeah, that's just, that's, that's just the technique that I've been using for a long time now since playing that game. <laughs> didn't even think I was gonna like Hades. I just bought it because I liked the art and I ended up getting addicted to the game as well. So I'm actually gonna shade this whole nose little thing right there. So as you could see, we're starting to gain like this very interesting uh, kind of shading look, this shaded look that we have here. And don't worry if you like accidentally color on the hair. Like here I did, I accidentally colored where I wasn't supposed to color. Or maybe I didn't, that's a different layer. It might be the other one. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but this is what it looks like and I, and I really uh, enjoy this look. I mean, look at that. So yeah, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna do this on the clothes too, just to kind of show you guys uh, how it would work as well. You could use the same two layers as well. You know, don't be scared too. So here's our, just with the darker, and then here is that extra light. So now we have this buildup of like three layers of lighting that I've kind of created. And, and you could see where that comes from in here. And I even used a uh, highlight as well here, which you can use too. I, I'll show you that real quick right now, actually, since why not? A little bonus, but uh, on top of the shade layer, I'm going to do it. I'm gonna set it as a clipping mask again. And come in here and like select a, a brighter orangey yellow maybe, depending on how your lighting looks. And you can come in and you can lay out where you think highlights are coming in. Don't forget to use interesting shapes, by the way. Your shape language says a lot about your art and I think it's cool to use cool shapes, you know. Make your shapes interesting. That includes the shapes in your shadows and in and, and uh, everything. So here we have these nice little spots of light. And now I'm gonna hit uh, add or add glow, either are good. Sometimes I do add glow, sometimes I do add, it depends. I like the glow one sometimes, but I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna lower the opacity on them. And I, lower, I make it pretty low, just so that it's like a slight highlight in certain spots. And that's how I do that extra highlight, so if you're wanting that extra, another extra layer of lighting to go on top of everything that's that's what i use so i'm going to show you guys now just how to do the uh the clothes kind of the same way using the same layers you know you don't need to make any new light any new layers i'm going to use this is the extra dark layer and this is the uh color shade layer i need to really get better with my art terminology because i feel off with it I know I'm using the wrong words all the time. I'm actually going to tilt this to the purple and, and try and find... I like that a lot, yeah. 
try to get something bright, brighter, not so gray kind of look. Sometimes it's even nice to go light, like pretty light. But yeah, let's let's lay these lay these down the same exact way. So I'll start out and then I'll cut and then I'll go back and show you guys uh, how it looks in the end. But I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna. I'm almost doing the same exact shading that I had done prior, so. And you can bucket fill these, like I said. Sometimes it's handy to just be able to use the bucket fill tool. Sometimes I, I think that might be too vibrant. So once again, you could do that clipping mask and I mean the alpha lock and you could kind of change it come in and just recolor it. Whoops. Try not to recolor <laughs> everything else. Make your brush smaller. Make sure you're not in invading the other parts of your art. I like that. I like this. All right. So yeah, lay down another one of those first color things. Same way that you did on the face, but now you're doing it for clothes and other materials. Uh, and then after that, do the second one. Okay, so I basically just came in and did that, that uh, color pass on this whole thing. Um, that first color pass to remove it. It looks went from this to this. So getting somewhere with that color pass. Now I'm going to add a darker color on top of it, the same way that I did with the skin. I'm just doing this just to show how you would do it on another area that isn't skin. I'm going to take an even darker color and I'm going to try and come in and really darken it. I'm going to go quite darker here because it's clothes and uh, there's more wiggle room with things that aren't skin sometimes. So even though it's much darker than the difference between those two colors on the skin, uh, it's, it's fabric so you could still have fun with it. And as you could see that airbrush layer like retains itself and there's a lot of cool things that that airbrush layer leads to your art looking like. And now you're starting to see that effect that my chainsaw il illustration, my chainsaw man illustration kind of has. That like there's so many weird color layers happening here. As you could see um, over here, like the chainsaw is a really good example. And so was his head. There's just like, what is happening in here? Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I get that effect. And that's truly my technique for shading and coloring. Uh, I've just unleashed the secrets upon you guys on how to do that. So this is probably the most complex part of the video where I uh, release my secret on coloring that I stole from a video game. But I hope that it makes sense and I hope that you guys come to understand it. So as you can see, it's starting to look like that. I'm going to do it for the rest of the shirt uh, real quick. All right, so art hack number four, four out of 10, which is da, 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 3D models. This is not cheating, I swear. <laughs> uh, I wrote this here. If you're on the iPad, use Magic Poser. Bug Clip Studio Paint EX uh, is built in with 3D models. Magic Poser is what I use when I'm on my iPad. I'm trying to get a specific pose. I find it to be really helpful. Also, you can go on Google SketchUp or model things in Blender or whatever, but if you're just hanging out here on Clip Studio Paint, you probably know that Clip Studio Paint has a model function to import models. And I'm just gonna show you guys how to do that since it's pretty simple and you could use it in a lot of ways in your art. Uh, somewhere over here, <laughs> I haven't used the models in a while, but uh, yeah, here they are. Material pose this is what you want to hit. Clip Studio Paint has a ton of models built into it. You could also buy models on the shop on Clip Studio Paint, which is you know that extra window that pops up with you. You got like you go underneath manage materials, or you could go find brushes and assets, assets as in models. So. Clip Studio Paint has some models and some poses and whatnot built in, so feel free to use those. It also has different body types built in. 
uh, there's two standard ones and then you could go and download more but if you don't know how to already this is going to be kind of a quick tip rather than you know, the previous one was pretty long about how I shade but this one's pretty quick because I'm just saying if you don't already use 3D models like you should use them <laughs> so yeah here is a 3D model that I just threw into Clip Studio it's uh where did it where is it here it is when you import it it's gonna come in kind of weird show you guys how it looks where did it go she's gone <laughs> uh technical difficulties with the models okay here's the model so there's a lot of things you could do with the model uh first of all you can just move it around that's something that you might want to get used to first this is just moving it left and right, up and down. This is for like sort of rotating around. Uh, it's basically like a regular 3D model in any art program. Front and back. This is more of like moving it around on that grid that you see. And then this is more range of rotation. These are more camera. You can see the little camera. So it's more like bringing the camera in and out, moving the camera this way or moving it this way. This is more moving the, the model itself. Just something to keep in mind. They all have their different intricacies and uses. So yeah, you could just move the model around wherever you want. Scrolling it also uh, kind of messes with your lens, I think, a bit. And I use the models a lot. You can move around each of the little bones and what not. The same thing works on the iPad if you have Magic Poser, which is the application that I use. It's pretty much the same exact thing when it comes to moving things around. And this thing will let you break bones, so just be aware if you're doing this. Try to use a 3D model with some knowledge of anatomy already, otherwise you could break bones like that and yeah, it's not realistic if you do that. Make sure that you know the limits of the human body. Try doing the pose yourself, you know. Try seeing if it, if it works or not. And if it doesn't work, then toss it out. But with this, you could even come into, like, each individual finger. You could come in and adjust the different fingers and whatnot. Very cool feature. You could even pick, like, hand poses. Like, if I want to use this OK sign or whatever. Uh... And that's how you use the model. And once you're done posing it, say I like this pose. I, w I wouldn't use this pose, but say I do like it. Come over to your layer window and you see how weird that is? That's because it's in there as an object layer. An object layer, sorry. So you could right click it and hit delete ruler and then come in here again and select rasterize. Which means you just flatten the image into that flat sort of looking thing. I usually put it, lower the opacity and then trace it or move it to the side and reference it or whatever you need the model for, use it in that way. It's really easy and if you're making stuff like webtoons, most webtoon artists these days use 3D models. So don't freak out if you want to use one and you think you might need it, if you can't get a pose right, it's not cheating, it's just using the tools at your hands. Uh, saying that using a 3D model is cheating is the same thing as like saying using a ruler is cheating. We're all learning and most people can't draw these poses from straight out of their head unless they have a ton of experience. And those that have a ton of experience started out using models or referencing things. So just don't worry about it. Keep tracing models, keep adding to your visual library and learning how to do these things. Eventually you'll catch on and you'll learn how to do it from memory. There are a lot of poses I could do from memory, and there's a lot of anatomy I could do from memory, but sometimes I just can't get a pose and I need it, uh, I need a model. So Magic Poser on the iPad is what you would use for Procreate, or if you have Clip Studio Paint on the iPad and you'd rather use it through there. I love Magic Poser. It's the best one on the iPad, but if you're on Clip Studio Paint EX, it's built in. So don't even worry about it. Once again, most webtoon artists use this, so don't freak out about breaking rules. No one cares. No one has to know either. You don't have to tell people that use models. <laughs> no one, no one's gonna question it. You know, if your art looks good, your art looks good. Just make sure you're not breaking too many bones with the models. 
Okay, so number five, Gaussian blurring backgrounds. This is a tip that's also very simple and shouldn't take me too long to teach you guys here. I'm gonna use this piece again for, uh, for reference. And I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of a trick to do some easy backgrounds. So first of all, maybe you wanna have a background idea already laid out. You might wanna think of something before you do this or there's other ways that you could do this as well. But basically, if you're doing a background and it's not the focus of your piece, I'd say it's okay to blur it. And a lot of artists use this technique, but some people just sometimes forget that it's a thing. And if you're looking to make a quick background, say you're just mostly a character artist and you wanna do something really quick, that's what I'm gonna teach you here. You could also use this technique if you've sketched out an entire background and you just don't, don't think it looks good, so sharp and you wanna blur it. But if you're looking to make a quick background for like your character design or something, just so it doesn't look so bland, uh, this is a pretty easy way to do that. So come in here and I'm gonna like take uh, the characters and their line art layer and I'm just gonna duplicate it see if that'll no that's not what I want <laughs> I'm gonna take I'm gonna try to take it let's see I'll here I'll duplicate them together separately and I'm gonna move it down here back where the uh, where the background is gonna end up being sorry you can't see my layers it's messy anyway there's no point in seeing them so I've got this like spare ink and color layer back here that I'm gonna use. Why is it doing that? Oh, that's not what I wanted. Right there, yeah, that's where I want it. Yeah, make sure that you got the right layer selected. My layers are named all weird garbage, so it's looking pretty jarbled over here, but try to keep your layers, you know, memorable. So I'm also gonna take the flowers as well. I'm gonna bring the flowers down. If I could find where they are. There they are. Duplicate layer. Take them down. Da, da, da. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, so now I have this extra, whoops, not what I wanted. I've got this sort of extra layer happening. So I'm, I, I, you could probably see it but if I do this. I kind of just copied the whole piece. I'm going to take this and I'm going to resize it and just drop it in the background. This is a pretty this isn't like a technique that I would use for this piece, but if you are looking to do something that is sort of uh, just laying out something to go behind your characters, I find that this is pretty useful. Take that and move it around. Yeah, distort it a bit and whatnot. Hit OK. Once again, doesn't really fit for this piece, but I'm gonna lock transparent pixels. I'm gonna come in here. Maybe I'll take a a uh, a dark red or something, and just color over everything. But before I do that, let me show you what it would look like if you were not to do this this way and you were to do it. Uh, you already have your background sketched out, and you want to make it blurry you want to unsharpen it always like blur your background so you could just gauge and blur this a lot it's taking its time to load sorry i have the alpha lock on <laughs> i don't want it on <laughs> i think that this this technique is a little hard to explain here but you can kind of see like yeah, it does, it does show the technique that I wanted it to show. You have this background and it's sort of faded out. It just gives it depth, you know, to have a faded background, a blurred background gives your art like 
depth field of view. So you could do that. You could also take it and just, sorry, color over, put a big color back there. Just quick background tip and trick. This is the tip and trick for getting a quick background. You could leave it like that. And you could also uh, gauge and blur that if you want, you know. Take off your alpha lock before you do that. And then gauge and blur it if you want. So yeah, all right. that's kind of what that looks like. So that's just an easy tip on how to do backgrounds. I'm gonna delete that. Uh, sorry if it was a bit confusing due to the piece that we're working on here, but you know, if you're working with a single character and you you just drew this character and they're sitting in this white void space, this is a pretty easy way to just put something behind them somehow. Uh, just doodle out some color blocking and then blur it or copy and paste your character and blur it or you know, do whatever. Think of something and use that Gaussian blur tool to your advantage because that's just a great way to show depth on the image. It's a great way to make your drawing look less, you know, flat. Okay, so tip number six is using gradient maps. I haven't been using gradient maps a whole lot, but I am looking forward to using them more in the future with my art. If you're looking to change the colors of your work or you're looking to go from black to white to color, from black and white to color, this is a good way to do that. I'm going to teach you guys real quick how to do them. Um, it's really simple in Clip Studio Paint. It's a little bit weirder in Procreate and Medibang also has the feature as well. So uh, you're more, also, I am 100% sure this feature originates from Photoshop. So if you're on Photoshop, don't even worry about it because you, you probably already know how to do it. You want to go over to layer and then hit new correction layer and then select gradient map. This is going to make a new layer and it's going to let you select some colors. I'm just going to check one of these uh, simple ones here just to kind of show you guys something and how this sort of works. I'm not going to go through the entire process of like <laughs> using this, but I am going to show you a little bit about how it does. Let's take the sunset purple just because uh, I really like using it. So you're going to hit OK. And now yeah, you see it looks like this and a lot of people get scared when it looks like this, but don't get scared because sorry, my dehumidifier is going off. There's a way to kind of clip this to the areas that you want it to be clipped. Okay, so you have your gradient map colored out and it's like completely covering everything that you have here and say you just want to color the skin or the jacket or whatever. Come in here and you see this big white thing. Oh, sorry. I'll pop out my layer window for you guys. Uh, this white thing is basically just your mask. Um, so you want to come in and you want to take your transparent tool and just bucket fill in the transparency. Let me do that again. I think I went a little bit fast there. Select transparent color and then take the bucket fill tool. Make sure that you're selecting that gradient uh, layer and just drop, drop down your transparent color. So now you have it blank and you could come in and you can use the gradient map and just select white again and come in and, and color only in the areas that you want to color. This is a great way for changing colors if you change your mind later. And it's also a great way for adding a different type of color palette to your work. So say we wanna work with a skin tone. I'm gonna fill this back in with white just for now, just so I could see. So say this is already a pretty cool skin tone, right? But you can come in here and what it's really doing is it's mapping your lights and darks to uh, the colors that are a part of this gradient map. So for skin, I mean, the somber shades are pretty good for skin as well. You might wanna switch over to one of these. Like that's kind of skin-like, but now you might think like, ah, uh, like I think I really want, um, sorry. <laughs> Like I really want it to be more red in certain areas. So you might want to come in here and select maybe a pinker kind of red for certain shades and whatnot. Uh, it takes a lot of fiddling around with, of course, and eventually you'll get what you want. 
but make sure that you're still retaining you know the work that you were all the work that you had done before if you're going in and changing it uh, you don't want to change too much so I'm not gonna adjust too much because this is just a demo but say I want to use this as my new skin tone come back in here and just bucket fill it transparent and then come back in take my ink brush select the white and color color it in make sure that your layer is I don't I accidentally have it above my line art it should really be above uh, the skin the color layer and whatnot so try not to be a knucklehead like I am so you could come in here and you could put some new kind of color into the skin and you could also come out and do it on whatever else so yeah that's gradient maps pretty easy right also set up clipping mask where you need to but uh, a lot of people just think that gradient map is just changing the whole color of the entire piece when in reality it's pretty useful for adding color or changing color to whatever or even changing your color palette to something else and I just find it to be literally one of the most useful features digitally and I'm trying to use it more I'm probably gonna use it a lot with this piece later on I'm trying to get a different kind of color value here but that's how you use it and you need to experiment with it <laughs> a bit to get what you want and if you're going it's really helpful if you're going from black and white to color that's something that I really want to try out and if I do that maybe I'll make a YouTube video on it you know going from a black and white piece to a color piece using gradient maps let me know if you want to see that or something but yeah super useful quick kind of thing that you could do that I feel like a lot of people are intimidated by and not a lot of people use it enough even though it's this very advantageous tool that you could use don't be afraid to use it whoops I got <laughs> I got a couple gradient maps just sitting in here. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. Back to normal, I guess. <laughs> okay, so I've got one of my obscure tips here. This is one of like the hot and spicy tips that I have for you guys. And I actually used this technique recently on a piece, my Chainsaw Man illustration. I'll show you guys where I used it and how I did it. Uh, this is called isolating colors, or at least that's what I call it. Uh, I don't know if that's actually what it's called, but it's a specific tool that you could use, and I know that it's in other software as well. And just for reference, it's how I did the brain here in the Chainsaw Man illustration. So it's how I got that cool kind of isolated colored texture going on. And I'm gonna do a quick demo on how to use it just cause uh, it's really helpful if you're painting around and you want to kind of simplify your painting. But it's also just good in general for a multitude of things, backgrounds, whatever you're trying to work on. Uh, say I'm trying to like paint blood. <laughs> I don't know why I think about blood first, but let's say I want to paint a big goop, a big goopy of blood here. I'm doing a big goopus blood blob you know and I'm and I'm doing it very painterly I'm taking you know multiple colors and doing a lot of shading and whatnot coming in here and and like really shading it up you know you're painting around uh, so paint paint what you have to paint I don't really like this brush, but it's just for demo purposes. I'll make the brush smaller too, and I'll do, I'll show you guys a little bit of what it looks like if you add detailing to. But yeah, just for demonstration how this would work. So I used this technique on my Chainsaw Man illustration and it actually came out really cool. I was quite happy with the result and it was the first time I had used the technique and since then I've used it quite a few times in some of my art. So yeah, it's pretty fun. So say you have a, I don't know, it looks like a like an organ got ripped out of someone's body or something. Uh, maybe I'll go a little bit lighter in some of these areas. Like try to add a bit of a white, sort of highlight 
give it that wet kind of look. So this is how you get that effect that I got back then. And, and I feel like I don't see a lot of people talk about this feature with digital art. So I'm kind of excited to show you guys this because I think it's like an, an uh, underrated thing. So come in here underneath the filter tool and hit effect and then hit artistic. And immediately you're gonna see it do what it just did. And basically it, it isolates the colors, as I say. <laughs> so it takes the colors and it messes with them and it creates this kind of localized effect. So it looks more like cell shading than it did painterly now. It really changes the style. So you might wanna change the line thickness. Like I like it a bit lower line simplicity which kind of lessens a bit of that crumbly whatnot line density it's really you want to play a lot with this kind of stuff anti-aliasing blending smooths it out makes it a little bit more gritty blur if you want to blur it and then the coolest thing that i think here is like number of colors you can make this higher, which gives it more of a blurry look, or you could lower it to like two or even like just five or six or however many colors you want. And it's just this neat feature that you could play with quite a bit. So I actually have another drawing open over here, which is an illustration that I did a long time ago. And just for shits and giggles, because I didn't try this beforehand. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. But to show you guys a little bit more in depth about how this would look if you were to use this on a specific painting, I'm gonna do it here. Uh, I wouldn't use it here. Obviously this is a finished piece, but if I were to, look at that, isn't that crazy? It's pretty weird. So I could really simplify the amount of colors. I can make it so that it's just five colors. This is also helpful if you're taking photos and you want to move the photos like into your webtoon for a background or something. Say you took a photo of like a classroom and you're making this rom-com anime style webtoon and you want to use that background but you want to make sure you want to like make it either easier to trace or you want to use it straight out and make it look more like a drawing. You could just come in here and like <laughs> isolate your numbers of colors. So I could take this piece of Lola and I could really uh, get rid of things. You could also do color only, which would get rid of those little lines if you want to. Just lessen everything slowly, slowly take apart the piece by its colors. This might also be pretty cool to use when studying other artists. So yeah, that's how you do that. Obviously, I'm not going to do this to poor Lola. <laughs> but this technique sort of leads right into my next uh, spicy art tip. So. so my next art tip is the sharpen tool. And uh, I'm going to name an artist here. If you don't know them, that's OK. But there's this artist called Blue Satan. And they're a really popular Instagram artist. And they have this sort of <sighs> Ethan Becker, another YouTuber, made this video on their art and Ethan was like screaming the entire time about that dark little shadow that they have around certain highlights and whatnot I know how to do that <laughs> he couldn't figure it out for some reason but there is a way to achieve that kind of look and I'm going to show you I'm going to try to show you here with this illustration or maybe here with this goopy blood blob but what what Blue Satan does and what Ethan couldn't figure out is that they actually use the sharpen tool, which is yet another one of these filter things up here. Uh, Blue Satan works in Procreate. So if you're really looking for the way that their art looks, that's what I would use, but you can use it here. And then it, it does it automatically. I don't know if you missed that or not. It might've gone really too fast, but you see how it adds around it kind of it darkens it. You can use it here for Lola. I'm going to zoom in on Lola's face for a bit just to really get up and show you guys how this works. And on on uh, Procreate, you could like adjust it. But here on, on Clip Studio, you could sharpen it. And you see that? See it? You see it? 
You could see it really weirdly if you zoom in all the way. It added this like little border around your colors, kind of. It sharpens your shapes. You could hit shar sharpen more, which just knocks it way too much. <laughs> But I think you could keep hitting that sharpen tool until you're content. You see how it adds that like outline that they have? Uh, this is not a, a good painting to use it with, but I have think I've sharpened this painting before, so it's already been pushed along. But that's how those artists get that uh, that like dark thing. You see, I have it here because I've already sharpened this piece before. But if you were to do it with like this blob. That's the technique that the artists use to get that dark or that outline around their line art. It's just the sharpen tool and uh, Ethan can figure that out. So if you, if you didn't know how to do that before, I might make this into its own video just for clickbait. Like, <laughs> should I do that? I might make a video titled, uh, how blue Satan does that weird cast shadow around their paintings or something. I don't know. I don't know what I would title it. Um, the Instagram art hack that all Instagram artists use, something stupid like that, right? I don't know, but if you didn't know how to do it, now you do. It's a pretty simple technique, and I feel bad for Ethan because he couldn't figure it out, but I just taught y'all how to use it, so go ahead and use it in your own paintings. It's really, it looks really nice in paintings. In fact, I actually have a painting in here I might want to, like, mess around with. I have a lot of paintings that we could come in here and just throw it on and see what happens, you know? Like, like, uh, I got one of my self-portraits in here. Here's a painting I did a long time ago. This is actually a traditional painting too, so I already have that kind of thing going on, but I don't think this will look good with it, but just for shits and giggles. If I hit sharpen, it adds that, see how it like outlines it a bit. In a high resolution, nice painting if you add this you're going to get that effect of that cast shadow underneath the highlight like blue satan does on instagram so last big tip because the last tip is kind of a bit of a joke tip but it's it's a real tip too so our tip number nine is radial i put radial but i don't think that's what it's called shading <laughs> I did this on my Chainsaw Man illustration. You could see it across the face right here, like right across. And I'm about to just show you guys how to do it on the piece that I'm working on right now. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna try to do it uh, here as well. Let's see, I'm gonna make a new layer. I'll pop in my layer window for you guys. I've got a new layer, I'm gonna make a clipping mask. All these are clipping down to the color layer, <laughs> no matter what, so don't need to worry about that. But if I'm trying to get that shading that I tried to get on that uh, Chainsaw Man piece, there was a specific way that I did this. And that was that I just took a really big, you know, I should unclipping mask it to, <laughs> to start with. Start with no clipping mask, how's that? This is like a technique that I've been using for a while. It's just, I take this kind of diagonal thing and I come in here and I, I make a big diagonal. This is like extra shading tip and I bucket fill half of it. I then duplicate it and the one below it, I blur. I do a Gaussian blur on it. So I make it nice and soft, just like that. And yeah, let's see. Merge them. Maybe I'll Gaussian blur this whole thing together as well. All right. Now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna set it as multiply. I'll do a clipping mask and I'll lower the opacity. Now I have this nice dynamic lighting going on and I didn't even have to do any work. Uh, one of the cool things that you could do with this is you could like come in and take the selection tool and cut out places that you want to be highlighted with a transparent airbrush tool. So you come in here and you could like say, ah, you know what, I think I want a big highlight here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this when I'm done with it, but 
just to like show you how that is. Isn't that nice? It's just a really quick and easy way to get a very simple and, and interesting dynamic shading. I've been using this on my art for like a very long time. It's a technique that I always pull out if I think a piece is looking boring in the shading department. So if you want a fast way to make interesting shading, that's just one of the ways that you can do it. Uh, I think I stole this technique from someone else as well. So don't, don't, uh, don't think of me as the original for that. But that's our tip number nine. Ah, okay. <laughs> Tip number 10. All right, so don't get mad at me about this one. I'm kind of a tease. I really couldn't think of like 10 tips. I was already sort of digging at the barrel here with this stuff, but my 10th tip is just using a ruler and I'll show you what I mean by that. No one get mad at me about this. What I'm about to do. <laughs> I joke about the ruler a lot, but I'm very serious about it. If you're doing digital art, you've probably experienced the digital art ruler lifestyle, as in you've dealt with all these ruler settings over here, which is annoying. If you're just trying to make a straight line, I seriously don't use that at all. If you're trying to make a straight line, take your, take your ruler, your wooden ruler, even a, even a T-square, a protractor, whatever you have that's a straight edge, take it. You see my tablet screen? Put it on your screen. Make a line. Sorry. <laughs> Make a line except it doesn't show up. There we go. Rather than going and like selecting, having to go into the ruler thing and like select the ruler tool, yeah, 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 yeah. It's so annoying. Also here you could get line weight. You could do different line weight. You go thin, you go thick. Can't really do that with the ruler tool, can you? And look at how easy it is to just move around. You don't have to like click around to get the freaking tool to move. Oh my God, isn't that so annoying? Here it's, it's just so much faster, please. Trust me when I say, have your shitty little wooden ruler next to your drawing tablet when you draw. I'm not even joking. I use this thing, digital and traditional art, both. It's extremely important. I, I, like, I see so many people fiddling with the ruler tool for eight hours trying to get a straight line. And I'm just like, look, look at this thing. You see this right here? My 12 inch ruler, my 12 inch wooden ruler easy peasy so that's that you know that's that's tip number 10 <laughs> that's that's all my 10 digital art hacks and i tried to make some of these interesting and different from what maybe you've already seen on youtube before and i hope that some of these were useful to you and that some of these were new to you that's really what i was trying to do was to get tips that would be news to people like Maybe you've never heard some of these before and you're excited to go and learn them. I really hope that some of these were innovative and not just uh, carbon copies of other tutorials on YouTube. I tried my hardest to think of things that are original thoughts and techniques. And most of these are techniques that I use in my art nonstop. I use that airbrush shading method for pretty much every illustration I make ever. And uh, Gaussian blurring backgrounds, so simple and easy way to make your character designs just like look better and all this stuff is just, it's just an easy and quick way to make your digital art look more professional and make more sense and also work faster. So I really hope you guys on YouTube enjoyed this. Once again, I'm streaming this live on Twitch, so if you would like to come over to Twitch and watch one of these art classes. I'm changing, I'm in the middle of changing my stream schedule right now because I just went away and I'm in Georgia at college right now at, at, uh, at, at SCAD right now. So I'm right here right now. I'm trying to figure out my schedule. I'm no longer here at this school. I'm now here, literally in the South, but 
I do class. I try to do classes every week. So feel free to come over to Twitch if you're from YouTube. And if you're also on YouTube, I notice that like not a lot of people are subscribed, but sure do a lot of people watch my videos that are not subscribed. So please give me a subscription if you liked this video and leave a comment with your art tips and leave me a like and share it with your friends. I don't know. Come over to Twitch sometime and feel free to ask questions as well. I'm always open to answering questions. I don't get a lot of YouTube comments, so if you ask me a question, I'll probably be able to answer it no matter what. And uh, thanks for watching.